welcome back. I'm glad you're here. And if you've never been here before, welcome. Um, we have some questions for you guys today. The way that works is I want you to answer your questions in the comments. I have people that are sitting here looking for your responses. Um, and if you guys could comment, then they can let me know your responses. That would be great. Um, the questions I have for today, as usual, I want to know where you're calling in from. Calling in from, sorry. Commenting in from. I want to know if you've been to the OLC before. I had a couple people last year, or last Facebook Live tell me they've been here. Uh, how many times they've been here, which was awesome. And then I'm curious, since we're talking about insects today, are there any insects that you are afraid of? For me, I have a few that I'm afraid of that aren't necessarily insects. Not a big fan of spiders, but we'll talk more about spiders in a minute. And then what is your favorite insect? So if you are afraid of an insect, what kind it is? And then what is your favorite insect? Before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out to the West Valley Corona Care kids that are watching. Hey guys, it was great to see you at lunch yesterday. Thanks for watching. We miss seeing all your faces. Um, and I also want to give a sh shout out to uh, Hayden who was collecting incense and sent some pictures to us already. And then to our family, Drake and Kirsten, who actually helped uh, us collect the insects that we're going to be talking about today. So we are going to be doing a slideshow. So I'm going to be talking at you for a little bit. We have a lot of in live insects we're going to talk about at the end of the slideshow. And then I'm going to go over and show you guys some of the tools that you might need for collecting insects on your own. So we're going to get started. Jasper's going to show us the screen. So our show is called Bugs in Your Backyard. I am going to ask you some questions that I want you to comment. So first of all, what makes an insect an insect? I talked about spiders a second ago, but insects actually have no backbone. They are invertebrates. Uh, they're the largest group of uh, critters inside of the anthropod group, which is big, huge way animals and critters are sorted. We talked about mammals and birds. There's also a group called arthropods. They actually have three body parts. So they have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, if you guys can see those on the screen. They also have three pairs of legs, so six total legs, and they do have antenna. So if you find a crawly thing that doesn't have the three body parts, antenna, or six legs, then you know it's not an insect. They are uh, also have a segmented body, the three body parts. They are four different categories inside of arthro arthropods. There are spiders and scorpions, which spiders are not my favorite. There are crustaceans, insects, and myriapods. And there's also extinct ones called trilobites, which is the top left corner there. But today we're gonna focus mostly on insects. Um, and there's over a million different arthropods, but 90% of those are insects. So there's lots of places where you guys can find insects. Um, these are some of their habitats. So I'm gonna ask you guys who are watching, do you wanna visit the trees, the grass? Do you wanna go look under some rocks? Do you wanna talk about garden insects? Or do you wanna talk about insects who live in the streams? So I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to think about uh, what area you wanna talk about first. And people are going to decide which habitat we go to first. First comment gets to pick. Grass. We are gonna go to the grass. And who told us where to go, Stella? Um, Robin. Robin, thank you, Robin. So in the grass, we have lots of these creepy crawly things. Like I mentioned before, I don't like spiders. They are not an insect. I also am not a big fan of a tick. They are actually part of the arachnid family. So they have eight legs. So if you find a creepy crawly thing that have eight legs, they're not an insect, but they are part of arthropods. Um, but they're found everywhere in the world, except for really cold places. They have special things. Um, grasshoppers have special things called type. Oh my gosh, I can't say the word. They have these little ear things on their abdomens that actually will vibrate so they can send um, out calls to mates and things like that. 
and grasshoppers have actually been around since before dinosaurs. The lace wings, we're going to talk more about lace wings. They're the critter in the left hand side. Uh, they're really good for garden pests. Uh, if you guys don't like to have aphids eating on your garden, you'll want to have lace wings. They're beautiful to see and they're not very good flyers. And of course the ants you will definitely find in the garden. They can carry things 20 to 50 times more than their body weight. So if you can imagine, if you are a 60 pound kid, how heavy of an item could you carry if you could carry something 20 times your weight? There's more than 9,000 different species of ants and ants are super smart. We have a huge ant pile uh, nest home out at our forest that we've been watching and they actually have a highway that you can actually see where they have walked over and over again. And so ants are really, really smart and they're able to communicate with other ants. So we're gonna go back. Do we have another suggestion, Stella, of where to visit? Uh, streams. Excellent. We're gonna go to streams. This is probably my favorite place to look for insects and other crawly things. So I don't know if you guys knew this, but dragonflies, most are all dragonflies start their life is uh, in the water. They lay their eggs in the water and then dragonflies actually hatch out into a water living critter. Um, they're super predaceous. They like to actually eat other smaller fish and maybe even tadpoles. They will hatch out of their water body and turn into a flying dragonfly. So if you're ever at a pond and you see it looks like an out, outside skeleton of something, it probably is one of these critters. They haven't died, they just born into something new. We saw a lot of water striders this week. Water striders are cool because they can actually walk on water. They have tiny little hairs that help them trap air and they can kind of float on top of the water but the cool picture there you can see where they're kind of pushing the water um, they actually could communicate with each other by making sounds on the water and if they were the size of a human so as big as one of us they'd be as fast as a jet you guys have maybe seen a jet plane flying over you um, of course there's the mosquito they also start their life in the water so if you guys um, have standing water they like to lay their eggs in maybe a bucket of water or in ponds. Um, we have lots of mosquito larvae in our sample today. Uh, people don't like mosquitoes because they like to suck blood and carry disease. But if you have toads and healthy water, toads love to eat mosquitoes, so they're great. One of my favorites is the water boatmen. They're awesome because they have oar-like front legs. And on their sides, if you catch one in the water, you can see their sides are kind of shiny. They actually trap water kind of like a scuba tank and so they'll come up and grab some water out of the surface and then they'll zoom back down and they can breathe underwater using that. Um, and they like to fly to new ponds or to new bodies of water if their pond has dried up. So water boatmen are cool to see. They And sometimes they can bite so I want to be careful of all these. And then if you are a fisherman, the caddis fly is the best uh, fly to use when you're fishing sometimes. And the reason we like these guys is they actually, when they're young, will attach themselves to the bottom of rock. They have really sticky spit and so they'll roll around in sand or in plants and they will actually stay in that little kind of sleeping bag made of stuff and eat things as it comes flying by or in the water by. And they hatch out into these really cool um, flying things. And they don't have mouths, they have to use um, sip things to get their nectar. So we'll go to one more habitat here. Do we have another suggestion out there? Uh, a lot of people are saying under rocks. Oh, that was a good one. Some technical difficulties here. So we did find a few of these today we're going to show up. So under rocks is probably the easiest place for you guys to look for insects and things when we're done today. Um, as we talked about, insects have six legs. So we have a picture up here of a millipede and a pill bug. They are not insects because you guys can see that they have a lot of legs. So the millipede and centipedes are uh, many, many legged. They'll either have one leg per segment on their body or two. And then pill bugs are roly polies as we call them for fun. They have 14 legs and they're related to the crustaceans. They roll up in a ball and they're trying to protect themselves. Um, they're super cute little bugs, I think. And they love to eat decaying plant uh, matter. Uh, slugs are also under rocks and we know they're not insects because they don't have any legs. Um, and then we have earthworms, earthworms, sorry. 
Uh, these guys are cool. Obviously not an insect, but they um, will be under rocks. You'll see them. They belong to a group called annelids. And they don't have respiratory organs, so they have to breathe through their skin. Like you and I have lungs, they have to breathe through their skin. And then of course are the earwigs. No one likes earwigs. They do not go into your ears. They like moist places. Um, and they will protect their babies. So if you get bitten by an earwig, it's probably a mom trying to protect their babies. They have wings, so they can fly, but they do not use them, which is kind of cool. We have one more. Let's talk about some impressive insects. Um, number one there, maybe you guys can take a second and see if you recognize any of these insects. So number one is actually a Titan beetle and it can have antenna that are 25 centimeters long. So I think Jasper's gonna pan over to me. Their antenna can be 25 centimeters long. They're pretty awesome. They have the largest antenna. We also have the heaviest insect, which is number two there. You can see it on their hand. It's the Goliath beetle. And actually, we tested this out today. If you put two of these books together, that's how much that beetle would weigh, which is pretty awesome. And then we have insect number three, which is the longest insect, and that belongs to the giant walking stick, and they can actually be 20 inches long, so from here to here, which is huge. And then we have insect four, which is the harvester ant. And we were researching this this morning. Most insects either sting or bite. Um, this awesome ant actually does both. It stings and bites, that's why it's so deadly. And then the fastest insect, which we talked about earlier, is the dragonfly, and they can fly up to 35 miles per hour. So that's faster than a car should be going in a school zone. Usually our residential roads are how fast you should be driving. So imagine 35 miles per hour. The reason we love insects is they are pollinators. So maybe you guys know what that word means. We'll talk about it. They actually will fly around from flower to flower. They're attracted by the scent or the color of the flower and they like the smell of the nectar or the taste of the nectar and they will carry pollen from one flower to another flower while they're collecting nectar and then they also collect pollen for themselves. So they will go around and that helps flowers grow. It helps all fruiting things grow. So basically without insects, we would not have any of the awesome uh, things that we like to eat. Um, pollinators can be transplanted by air, water, birds, and insects and other bats. And 35% of the food that we eat that are crops, so corn and wheat and things, depend on insects. So almost half of what we eat depends on insects to help it grow. They're also good because they make dirt. We talked about plants and how they help them grow, but they help to decompose them. They uh, like to eat on the dead stuff that have fallen down, so plants and animals. Uh, they are really good at making compost, if you guys have heard that, so if you find them they're helping break down all the stuff that's fallen from trees or maybe stuff that has you've thrown out in your compost. Maybe you guys have seen mold on cheese. Insects are kind of like that. They help to break down things. And then they're good in the garden. They eat the bad bugs. So we talked about lace, lace wings earlier. Um, they like to feed on the pollen and the nectar. They, uh, their babies like to eat aphid. And aphids are things that will eat your garden up and ruin all your stuff. So they're actually, their babies are called aphid lions. Um, they're, their larvae like to eat dozens of aphids. If you guys have ever seen something eating your garden, these are gonna be your best friend. And then lady beetles or ladybugs, everyone loves, loves ladybugs. Uh, ladybugs are not as old as their spots are. So you can't count their spots and say that's how old they are. They actually are different species by their spots. Um, ladybugs love to eat aphids so if you have them and ladybugs actually don't look like that when they're babies they kind of look like a sort of like a 
smaller version of that, but they don't have the cool ladybug round body. So make sure you know what they look like before you start trying to hurt pests in your garden. And then we have assassin bugs. They will bite you really, really hard, but they do like to eat um, aphids on your garden. And then of course, praying mantis there up in the corner. Maybe you guys have seen the praying mantises. They're super cool. Um, they like to watch to turn their head. They can change their body colors and they love to eat um, aphids and things like that. Stella's got a question. Someone's heard that pill bugs are their closest relatives to crabs and shrimps, and I would agree with that, yeah. They are in the crustacean group. Pill bugs are awesome. So back to praying mantises, we've actually kept one here um, before. You have to be careful because when they hatch out their babies, they will eat their siblings, so you have to be careful with that. Um, and they are a pretty good predator. So this is a new word to some of us. Can anybody pronounce what this word is? Maybe sound it out. Ento, if you're studying bugs, entomology. So entomophagy, uh, which is another word for eating insects. So some cultures eat insects. Um, they eat the eggs, the larva, the pupa, and even the adults. Um, it's very common in tropical countries where the insects grow really big. So maybe that 20, the insect that was like two books full, you could get a lot of food out of that. Um, they grow, there's lots of them in different tropical places. They're a good source of protein. Don't run out and start eating a bunch of worms before you talk to your family, but they give you proteins, vitamins, fats, and essential minerals. Um, and actually they are kind of what's better for the environment. So we clear, our, our species clear a lot of tropical rainforests for cattle, uh, raising cattle which is really damaging to rainforests and just the general earth. Um, so if you were to convert to eating insects, you would actually be helping the planet. See if you can talk your parents into eating insects. Um, and they're really, really good for not clearing rainforests if you're eating insects. So don't forget about the questions. I'm wondering if you guys have been here before, where you're from, what insect are you afraid of and what insect do you like the most we're going to go around and explore some of the insects we have here at the outdoor learning center so the first one we're going to look at is the walking stick i think isaac and stella are going to hold it i'm going to get this to you so at the olc we have different insects um, we have a few that we live in our classroom. So you can see why this is called a walking stick. They use camouflage. Stella's going to get one on. You got her still? Okay. Yeah. Uh, these guys are cool because they use camouflage. You can see that why they're called a walking stick. Then nothing wants to eat them because it looks like a stick. They're found on all continents except Antarctica. Like we mentioned, the insects aren't in colder places. Most of them live in tropical places though, in subtropics. They are herbivores, so they only eat leaves. Um, they like the leaves that are high up in trees and they have a three stage life cycle. So eggs, nymphs, and adults. There are some stick bugs that have wings and will fly, but ours will not fly. They don't have wings. And in hotter climates, they can breed all year round. We have a lot of stick bugs here. They reproduce really well. And we have to be kind of careful what they eat. Um, they love to eat berry bushes and things like that. Thanks, Stell. And you notice they lose their legs sometimes. The next insect we're gonna look at, Isaac, do you wanna come hold this container for Jessica? Yeah. Is the Madagascar hissing cockroach. Do. No, you don't have to hold it. Just hold the container. Isaac's not, we're not convincing Isaac to put his hand down in there. And maybe Jasper, can you go underneath? Actually, hold on. So Madagascar hissing cockroaches can live two to five years in the wild. And they can grow up to, <laughs> I'm watching, watching Isaac. Whoa. Be brave. You got it, Isaac. You got it. Oh, that's the best part. So we'll zoom in on him. Cool. Thanks, Isaac. You're doing a good job. 
If you guys have ever watched something called Fear Factor, just go ahead and stand Isaac's hand if he's going to make it make a sound. So they're called hissing cockroaches. That's the way they protect okay. themselves. So like the walking stick, we're going to gently coax him into a hiss. Hiss. Can you hear it? Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you, Stella. Oh. Everyone should clap for Isaac right now. Here comes Tiffany. She's going to rescue him. <laughs> Isaac likes the reptiles. <laughs> Tiffany is very brave. So you'll see his antenna, like all insects have. Um, the males have horns, kind of like you think of a deer horn, not quite as big. Um, are there horns on that one? I can't tell in the picture. Maybe you're too close. Um, they use them for fighting and winning or whining roach hisses more than are they like girls like the ones that can hiss louder sorry um other insects make their sounds by rubbing body parts together or by using vibrating membrane these guys are cool because they actually exhale if you guys have ever ex exhaled before <sighs> like that they exhale uh through their breathing holes to make that hissing sound and if we could hear them it would be super cool uh, like 99% of all the cockroach species, these cockroaches are not pests. They don't inhabit uh, human dwellings. They like to live on the forest floor, waiting for night to come when they can scavenge for plant and food material. Good job, Tiffany. Uh, well, she maybe I should this one for a second longer. You guys, we have a lot of hissing cockroaches, and it is a pretty cool pet that you could actually have at home. If you were ever interested in having a cockroach, reach out to us on Facebook um, and we would be happy to uh, teach you how to take care of one and actually, if your parents approve of it, let you have one at home. They're really pretty cool pets. Um, Isaac is a little timid around them, but he can testify that they're an easy pet to take care of. You don't have to handle them. They're not like a dog or anything like that. So we have some other critters that we have here at the Outdoor Learning Center. So we have a lot of reptiles that eat uh, mealworms. And so we actually have a breeding colony of mealworms. These are some of the bigger ones that we can breed. But if I move this around a little bit, you might see some of the small little baby worms that we have in there. You can see the oats kind of move. That's places where the worms are. So mealworms go through a complete metamorphosis. They lay eggs. They uh, turn into larva. This is the larva stage that we like to feed to our, so our reptiles. And then, and we'll give a shout out to Kelly. She created this cool farm for us. And then they hatch into the adult. So we don't have a lot of critters like to eat these. Our turtles will eat these, but we don't feed them to a lot of the reptiles. They like the worms, the larva stage. You'll see this yellow stuff here. This is actually what we give them for water because they will drown and they like to eat the oats that are in there. This is another critter you could raise at home. There's many parents right now that are worried of what I'm suggesting for their children. So we'll go to the next one here. These are roly polies, and I'm going to put them in my hand here. I'm sure every kid has handled a roly poly before. So again, they have 14 legs. They do not go for, through a complete metamorphosis. They actually just get bigger and bigger and bigger, but they do lay eggs. I think of my friend Tom Bradabo that used to work here that would read a book called The Pillbug Life Cycle. So these are ones that you will not bite you, and they're really good for your garden. And if you go look under rocks, you definitely will find roly polies. But you can see him rolling up here. That's how he protects himself. So we'll put him back, them back, I should say. How are we doing on questions or comments, Tiffany? Uh, not many questions, but a lot of people are telling us their favorites. Or oh, awesome. So we're going to share your favorites. Remember, guys, this is a water beetle that we found. We're going to move to the water critters. These are probably my favorite. Um, do not get freaked out swimming. These guys live in your habitat in pool or in lakes and rivers and even pools um, and streams and ponds. This is an important part of the ecosystem. So 
If you didn't have these critters, your lakes would just fill in with dead, de decaying plants and things. So we got to have them. This is a little beetle that we caught. Um, insect, he's got six legs and antenna. And you can see him somewhere there. And he is probably, oh, there's a shiny. We talked about how they can collect oxygen from the air, kind of shiny. You can see it on the sides there. And then this is one of my favorites. These guys, this is a mayfly larva, and they're probably almost an inch long. And the reason that we like these guys is if you guys uh, go out and ever collect invertebrates in the water, they can actually tell you water quality. And so if you find mayflies, you know that you have pretty good water quality, I meaning no pollution in your water. You might have some, but mayflies can't live in water that has high pollution. That's when you start finding leeches and things like that. But these guys, this is their larval stage, so babies, and they will hatch out into a flying critter. But they're cool because they have three tails. And Jasper, you can see on their sides, can you guys see that stuff moving there? Those are actually gill-like structures like fish have, and that's how they breathe in the water. You guys here, we're watching him breathe right now. So Drake and uh, Kirsten and, and Chatteroy, they helped me catch these guys this week. They're our cousins. So that's pretty cool. And then we're gonna zoom over to this tank. It's pretty cloudy here, guys. So we'll see what we can find. There are a ton of black things swimming around, big black things, which is kind of funny. We collected tadpole eggs last week when we were doing amphibians. And guess what? The tadpole eggs hatched in the time that we were there, so we had to catch tadpoles this time. So all the eggs were gone, but now they are tadpoles. Are we frozen? Someone said we're frozen. And then here there is a ton of, I hate to say it, mosquito larva and black fly larva. You can't really see them. So we collected this in kind of a seasonal pond and they love um, kind of standing water. So not, they don't find dra or, uh, mosquitoes or black flies in we're going to fix the phone here real quick. So we're going to go around. If you guys have questions about any aquatic bugs, we love those. So ask us those questions. We're going to show you some tools that you might need to collect insects. So this is cool. It's a little field microscope. We have a ton of these if anybody parents want to borrow them while we're stuck at home. So basically, you can put your bug in here, you can put water in here, and then you can put the lid on it, and you can look through here, it'll magnify your bug. Or if you tip it forward, you can look down here. If you have water in here, you should not tip it forward, it'll go in your mouth, but you can put your eyeball right on here. Um, we also have a hand lens. It's good, kind of like a magnifying glass. You don't want to burn your insect, right? We have some little tubs. You guys could use yogurt containers, uh, plastic cups, anything you want. Obviously, this one doesn't have a lid on it, so if you're a little timid, you want to find something to put a lid on. You always want to make sure you cover it with something they can breathe out of. We have some forceps. So you have to be really careful. So if you have a critter like this that has squishy sides to it, you don't want to use forceps. A spoon would work well. But if you want to pick up a pill bug and you're a little scared, you can use that. Um, this is cool. If you guys have any tree cookies or even like a rock at home, you put these out for a couple weeks where your parents don't care if the grass dies. And then when you lift it up, you'll find lots of little bugs underneath of it. And then you want to put it back to make their home. And then we're going to actually put this on our Facebook page. There's a YouTube video. This is a bug collector. Stella, do you want to show them how to use it? Pretend there's a bug there. So she can put it on the straw, gently sucks, don't suck too hard, and the bug's gonna go up the straw and into this container, and then you can get a really good look on it. Obviously, you don't wanna share straws, but you can use that over and over again, and you shouldn't suck any bugs up. Shouldn't. And then we also have a field guide. If you guys want to borrow any of this stuff, we have lots of things we can check out to you. Tons of field guides. 
So once you collect your bugs, you can see what kind it is. We have some simple ones here with a cool ruler. It's really important. Scientists want to know how big their bug was. So if you guys collect anything, measure them. And then another cool field guide here. These are old. There's your different ladybugs. Always want to measure. And you guys, you always want to put bugs back where you found them and hopefully don't kill them for science. I have a couple questions. Jack is asking me a question that I don't know the answer to. Which insect lives the longest? Jack, I promise to get back to you on that. They don't live very long. And then Archie. Is this Archie, Archie, you think? Hey, Archie, what's up? We miss all of you. Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack and Archie, sorry. Hi, Jack and Archie. Um, what's the biggest spider in Washington? That is a good question. I'm going to go with... I think it's like a... Hobo? Are they big? I think it's a hobo or a wolf spider. Oh, wolf spiders are big too. Archie, of course you have, you guys have asked me questions I don't know. But I will look into those questions and get back to you. Um, we have any more questions out there or people want to say hi to? Stephanie is asking, can I raise skitters? Uh, water striders, is that what you're talking about? All oh, the ones, yeah, water striders. Um, they're kind of hard to raise because they escape. So if you can figure out a ecosystem like maybe a tank or something they wouldn't go out uh you guys could potentially that's a good question i might look into that um i don't like water striders much because they kind of bite but they're cool to look at um and then somebody was asking if you can check out the microscopes we do have microscopes they're not great but these little field microscopes you definitely could check those out and we'd be happy to put together a collection kit for anybody who was interested in it and wanted to borrow it for a little bit so, Tiffany, do you have a tally for what we have? People that said hi. Sweet. Or if they had a favor or not. Okay, so we have a lot of people. We're going to go back over here. Oh my goodness. Avery, Heidi, Andy, Ivan. They all are saying hi. Ruby the Snake. <laughs> said hi, Ruby the Snake. Annika, Linnea. Bo, Nally, Natalie, Robin, Alicia, Brandy, Kelsey, Gideon, that's a great name, Brad, Stephanie, Annika, Lena, Natalie, Madison, Kellen, Ellen, Braylon, Dashiell, Julia, Ashley, Alicia, Jason. Oh, somebody wants a cockroach. Excellent. So we have people watching from Medical Lake, Spokane, Cheney, Spokane Valley, South Pines Elementary. What's up? There's a second. Spokane. Oh my goodness. Uh, there's a second page. <laughs> Libby and family, Natalie, Stephanie, Ellen. Hey, No Nation. Mike, what's up? Heidi, uh, Jessalyn, Sarah, Mandy. Oh, Krina. Wah, wah, wah. Thanks, Krina. Oh, Julianne, another No Nation. And Chloe from 4-H, I bet. Cadence and Claire. Uh, Stella's laughing at me right now. From Spokane, North Spokane. Uh, people have been to the OLC. Quite a few of you. Those of you who said no. When we start having open houses, we hope to see you guys. Um, ooh, 10 plus times Heidi's been. I think you're the winner today. Uh, houses. People that are afraid of spiders. I'm right with you. Bees and mosquitoes. Oh, allergic to wasps. Yes. Assassin bugs and stick bugs. Is that Isaac? Just kidding. Afraid of stick bugs. Um, cockroach is not a big fan. They're not of tarantulas. I don't really love tarantulas either. Spiders and earwigs, and people love walking sticks, flower mantises. Uh, people love spiders. Thank you for those of you who love spiders. I appreciate it. Butterflies, beetles, grasshoppers, uh, roly polies. Somebody asked what roly polies like to eat. Anything that fell from trees or grasses or anything, they're good at decomposing. So we have one last question coming in. Is there a bug that shoots venom? Julia, I do not know that question. I know typically they bite and inject their venom that way. So maybe we'll look into those three questions. Stella is saying, yes, there is one. Tell, tell them, Stella. Uh, insects, some insects can spray their venom. Some insects can spray. I learned something new from my 12-year-old daughter. Bo and Hazen have both just said hi. Oh, who? Bo and Hazen. Bo and Hazen said hi. Hi, Hazen. I think you sent me pictures too, so thanks for sending pictures. Remember, guys, we're going to be here next week. The deal with next week is you're going to tell me what you want the show to be. So whatever you think you want to learn more about or new stuff, let us know. 
we'll take the most popular vote and then we'll design our Friday Live around it. Um, remember, we have a YouTube channel. Last week we had a glitch with technology on uploading the craft, um, but thanks for those of you who made the craft and we are sending prizes out to the people who make the craft. So remember, if you make the craft, we'll send a prize to you. You have to send us a picture or a comment or comment on our YouTube page. Um, again, we also are going to show a YouTube video on how to make the bug collector with the straws. And we have Robbie down in Boise who's been answering questions and saying hi. He actually helps me with my script. So thank you, Robbie. Tiffany's over here taking all the questions. Isaac very calmly handling our insects. And of course, Jasper, our IT guy, and Stella, I have to say hi to or say thanks to. Remember, you can email us at olcinfo at wvsd.org or comment on our Facebook page. Please share the video, share our YouTube channel. Uh, we miss you guys. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we will see you next Friday.